very familiar with. Um, and again, we borrowed this from a public health logic model. You've all seen this, right? Nobody's ever said, why? Well, I've never seen this triangle before. Hill, please tell me what this is about. This is new. I joke, I'm, I'm federally required by law. Any talk I give to show the triangle and then the circles will come later. The basic logic that we impress schools is, look, this is your school. And I've worked preschool through high school. I've worked in self-contained special ed settings. I've worked in alternative school settings. I've worked in juvenile justice settings. This is still your school. Good news is 80, 90% of kids will respond to universals, meaning tell, show, practice, they get it. Another 5, 10% kind of that at risk, and then that top part of the triangle, that 5% need highly individualized intensive supports. Now, interestingly, in most of the schools I work in, that 5% are not IEP kids. What we find is that if a kid gets identified anywhere along the K-12 you know, continuum, their needs are typically supported. We support them oftentimes in, in parallel play sort of situations, but they're supported. The key, however, is not that we differentiate and provide different things for kids, but that they're all connected. They're all connected. Um, I am, you know, and I tell everybody, I'm a very, very proud special educator. I'm a lifelong special educator. And we did a lot of things right. I think our law is a thing of beauty. I think it's an amazing piece of legislation that provides an entitlement as well as civil rights protections. However, we screwed up along the way. <laughs> One of the things we did when the law passed was, oh, give them to us, give them to us, give them to us. And then we said, oh, this isn't good. Here, take them back, take them back, take them back. <laughs> right? And then we said, oh, that's not good either. What I love now is sort of pushing class within a class. What we got wrong was this. Oh, she's struggling reading. I know, I'm going to take you out of reading class. Come to the trailer, <laughs> right? And I'll work on differentiation, I'll work on accommodations, and I'll also try to keep you up with the rest of your class. No way, no how. Didn't happen, right? We all know that didn't happen. So the other critical piece is universal means just that. Universal means everybody gets it. No exceptions. Some kids will get a little bit more, and others kids will even get more on top of that. So we've got to build these things on top of. George Sugai, my colleague and co-director, tells this great story about he was in this elementary school and, and visiting, and it was a PBS school watching, and there was somebody out front greeting all these kids, saying, hey, how are you today? Good to see you. And this little guy walked by, and she just completely ignored him. And, and he said, well, well, you know, how come you didn't say hello to, to that little guy? Oh, oh, he's, he's a red zone kid. He gets all kinds of individualized supports. So you don't need to greet him? Oh, no, no, no. Somebody else does that, you know, down the hallway. <laughs> and he kind of just stood there sort of dumbfounded like, um, okay, we've got some problems here. They missed a critical piece. <laughs> Universal means everybody. You know, the other key piece is if we continue to sort of operate in isolation, we continue to have the second problem we have in special ed, and that's that lack of generalization. In fact, our school at PBS work started because it was guys like me and Jeff Colvin and George Sugai sitting around telling the same story. We were all at some point in our careers self-contained high school BD teachers. And we all told the story about, you know, when we had our guys in our classroom, because they're typically our guys, right, every now and then we'd have a gal, but our guys in the classroom, they were okay. They were on task, they got along with each other for the most part, they did what they were supposed to do until the bell would ring and they would leave our class and all hell would break loose. You know, and again, at the time, we kept saying it's the kid, it's the kid, it's the kid. We gotta give the kid more. Well, in hindsight, no, made sense. My guys were 16, 17, 18 years old. They had failed in those environments their entire school career. They go back to the old environment, old teacher behavior, they go back to their old behavior because they know it's efficient and effective for them, right? So the challenge is, how do we build those environments? And that's really where our work started. It's like, okay, there's nothing magic that happened in our classrooms. What did we do? We had clear expectations. We taught and practiced those. We had clear routines. We taught and practiced those. We had high rates of positive feedback. None of those things are unique to a self-contained class, right? And so that's what we started doing. We started pushing them down into school-wide, one, to prevent, because it's much easier to prevent than to sort of remediate. And then second, trying to build those environments to increase the likelihood high-risk kids can be successful. 
The other parallel I oftentimes draw when I talk to teachers to kind of illustrate the importance of connecting these things. And I'll ask you guys, how many of you learned to speak a foreign language in high school or college? Somewhere along the way you, you studied a foreign language. Do you still speak that foreign language? Keep your hand up. Oops, sorry. Wow, nobody's hand stayed up. Usually there's a couple, you know, kind of halfway or a oh, you know, little. Why? Right? Practice, practice, practice. What I tell educators is, look, you're sending that kid to the counselor. You're sending that kid to the special educator to learn to speak French. And unless everybody in your school speaks French, don't be surprised when they don't master that language. The degree to which we're going to be successful with high-risk kids is predicated on good universals. If everybody's not speaking the same language, if everybody's not giving the same feedback, if everybody's not explicitly teaching, kids are not going to be successful. Now, we had an unintended consequence when we started using this to kind of illustrate this logic of a continuum. And schools no longer talk about, you know, IEP kids and non-IEP kids. They talk about red kids and yellow kids and green kids. I'm like, no, no, no. Or the other, the pointy end kids, right? Oh, yeah, he's a pointy end kid. Pointy end Oh, yeah, the top of the triangle, the pointy end. Oh. Yeah, see? <laughs> so we said, no, 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 no. That wasn't the intent. The intent was to illustrate how you've got to build a continuum. So this is a much better example. This is my daughter. My daughter Emily is a junior in college, doing fantastic. She's brilliant, bright young girl, right? Low biased, I know, because I'm dad, but still. This is my daughter across the continuum. My daughter learned to read when she was about three and a half, four years old. She's an English major. She still gets in the car if it's more than 10 minute drive, has got to have a book. She reads all the time. She's also a great equestrian. She didn't need anything beyond universals so she could be successful. She did pretty good in social skills. She struggled a little bit in science and Spanish, but she hung in there. But when it came to math, since grade five, we had to hire a tutor to work with her weekly to get her all the way through high school. She needed highly individualized, intensive supports to be successful in math. Now, you would never look at my daughter and say, well, that's a red zone kid, right? But when it came to that, she needed those intensive supports. The idea is that kids don't fit in red, yellow, green. Kids will need different levels of support across the school day to be successful. So it's not that kids are lock stepped in, it's what environments, or excuse me, what supports can we put in our environment to increase the likelihood. So some of the essential features then.